Hello and welcome. You're watching Business Today TV. I'm Sakshi Batra, and with me on the show, I have somebody very, very special joining right in, Mr. Pradeep Pan joins in. He's the executive director at Ross Stone Technologies and also the former MD at Taipei Fubon Bank. Uh, welcome to Business Today TV, and thank you so much for uh, taking the time out for this interaction. Uh, well, uh, we heard you uh, talk about the digital payments, so that's what I'm going to dive right in to understand from your perspective how is India taking on this journey of digital payments. We've seen a sharp boom. What is good about India's digital ecosystem is that we have put some basic bricks in place, some basic infrastructure in place, which is going to help India drive digital payments a lot in the future. You know, I think among all the countries that we can look around right now, India probably has the best infrastructure. You take UPI, you take Aadhaar, and you take 5G coming in. I think India is in a unique position to build on digital payments. Right. Now, what, the way we have to look at digital payments is that it is the bedrock or it is the oil in which our economic growth can happen. Yeah. And I think it is, it is a very important tool that we have to drive India's economic growth in the next 10 years and beyond. Right. Absolutely. Because, you know, the government has talked about looking at a cashless economy going forward in the future. I want to understand from your experience worldwide uh, to help us understand in India, is it possible that we may have a complete cashless economy going forward? Will cash and digital payments coexist? What are your thoughts? I think the experience around the world is that cashless cannot be driven by government mandate. I think it is going to be driven by customers saying, I want to transact in a cashless way. And as you said, COVID has really helped in driving this. In many countries, people now don't want to handle currencies because they think currencies can even be bring them some kind of an infection or, or they are less clean than yes. using digital yes. currency. So in a way, I think uh, cashless is achievable. That part we have to work on it to make it meaningful for the man on the street and everybody really. My worry or my goal would be that India should look at an inclusive development of digital payment where everybody in India has access to digital payments and everybody can use them in daily lives. If that were to happen, I think we will automatically be a cashless society. Right. So what all will India need to do at the policy level, at the ground level to achieve that? I think a lot of it has already been put in place. And uh, to me, the biggest challenges are twofold. One is how do we balance the growth of or our parallel economy, yeah. which is the cash economy, and try to convert that into a formal economy. Mm. But the big challenge there is really the privacy and security of digital right. payments. Right. We have to really make sure that people believe that it is secure. And people also have privacy when they are using digital payments. Right. Now, Ability to track every transaction is very good in some ways, but it is also something which may put fear in people's mind on saying whether I really right. want to use digital payments or not. Right. Same thing goes for security. If people are not assured of security of their personal data and their personal finances, they may shy away from using digital payments. Right. So this is one of the things that needs to be handled. Yeah. This is probably at the end of people in the urban areas and people who, you know, who are on a higher socioeconomic growth. Sure, sure. But there is another problem that I see in the lower socioeconomic growth. I think there the problem is going to be how to enable people to come onto digital payments. Lack of awareness. Not lack of awareness. I think in my mind it is how do you do KYC, know your customer, how do you do due diligence? Because one of the commitments all major economies has is to make sure that we are we are not getting into money laundering situations and, and the government of India and, and the big businesses have that responsibility. Sure. Now to balance that and to make sure that every citizen of India has access to digital payments mm. is the other challenge. I, I, I don't see a big infrastructure challenge for, for India right now in digital payments. Okay. But I do see policy challenges and I do see implementation challenges. You're right, because we do not have a privacy law right now. We do not have a data protection law right now. Uh, we are still far away from implementing a cyber secure uh, system as well in India. So looking at these challenges, we're already uh, coming to know about so many frauds taking place in the digital payment space. And this is just the starting point. More and more fintech companies are jumping into it. So you'll 
will have many more platforms coming out with their things. All the banks, traditional banks are launching their own payment systems as well. So with the influx of such a large system, which is on, uh, you know, play in, uh, place in digitally, uh, we do not have something which can secure our data. What then is the need of the hour? So I, so to be fair, yeah. I think the frauds will never go away, right? I, I, I mean, fraudsters are also in the business of creating new ways of creating fraud, let's say. But the issue in my mind is that the common man should be assured that there are proper safeguards against fraudsters. Yeah. And they have recourse to getting their money in case there was a fraud to be happen. Right. I think there is, there has to be more awareness. Mm -hmm. I, ha I think there has to be more investment into uh, ensuring that fraudsters cannot access the data, mm -hmm. cannot access the funds of the individuals. Right. Um, but a lot of it is psychological. Mm -hmm. I think if, if businesses start to focus on it, if we start putting, talking about it and putting structures in place, I think people will get reassured. Hmm. Okay. Also wanted to understand from you, there is a whole talk about that worldwide, there are many places where digital payments are also paid for, like, you know, the consumers will have to pay for making digital transactions. That uh, right now, the finance minister has talked about this is not the time to implement any of those uh, sort of things, because right now we are in the phase of pushing digital payments as far and wide as possible. But later on, do you think that something like that could actually come about as well and would be okay with the Indians? I think you might have heard when I, when I was talking earlier that in my mind, the future of payments is invisible, instant and free. Payments are, you know, they are like the lifeblood. They are like the air we breathe in the economy and trade. And we shouldn't be making money or we shouldn't be trying to make money on payments. Yes. But the trade and the commerce that happens on top of these payments is where the money should be made because that is where the value is being created. Mm. So... I, I, I completely agree. I think uh, we have to move towards where the cost of payments is going towards zero or is very close to zero. It is an infrastructure. It is not a business to make money on. It is, it is, a, it is a glue and it is the oil that will fire our economy. Right. So last question to you. You know, we are at India at 75, celebrated 75 years of independence. Uh, we're looking at the next 25 years as the Amrit Kal. Uh, the Prime Minister has talked about a vision of seeing India as a developed country in the next 25 years. Digitally, financially, um, you know, in the banking and finance space, where do you see India growing over the next 25 years? So I think, uh, you know, there are a lot of voices comparing India with China's growth rates in the yes. past three decades. But my personal view is that India has done very well in terms of putting all the elements of infrastructure in place, especially for a digital economy. Mm. And the other thing that we have is more than half of our population is young, yeah. is youth. That is something uh, which is in great favor of our growth. And youth are more tech-savvy tech in India. We have the best engineers. We have the best programmers. Yeah. So in my mind, we have to look at it as a big wheel that we are. And it will take time for us to get into motion. But when it gets into motion, I think we are going to be in a very, 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 very dependable and stable cycle of growth. And I, I would tend to agree that next 10 years, India will have very high growth. And after that, I think we'll definitely be one of the fastest growing large economies in the world. Okay, well, thank you so much on that note, Mr. Pant. It was great speaking with you and uh, seeking all those insights from you. Thank you, Shakshi. It was a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you. you very much. Take care, sir. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.